The Creality CR30 is a production 3D printer, and in this video I'm going to show you two upgrades you can make to your CR30 to help unleash its full potential. The Creality CR30 uses a unique conveyor belt platform for printing, which allows the printer to create multiple copies of an object by continuously moving them down the conveyor belt as they're printing. This is a really unique approach to 3D printing for production, but the CR30 itself has a couple of quirks that make it less than ideal for this style of printing. For one, the stepper motors that control the motion system use a long, unsupported shaft for the timing pulley. This is a less than ideal situation, as you typically want the timing pulley located as close to the base of the stepper shaft as possible. The CR30 also uses V-slot wheels for the X and Y axis, which can wear out over time. You can see these ones have a little bit of a powder on them, which is a result of them being over-tightened. The X axis on the CR30 is offset by 45 degrees. This means that the bracket can wobble slightly if the V-slot wheels aren't tensioned perfectly. Considering that the CR30 is designed for production, solving design issues that can affect repeatability should be a top priority for anybody with one of these printers. That brings us to today's upgrade. The stepper motor upgrade kit from Repcord is actually two upgrades in one. In addition to a stepper motor from LDO Motors that contains a higher level of accuracy, it also contains a supported bracket that allows the stepper motor to be mounted to the CR30 in a way that supports the shaft of the stepper. This upgrade kit contains both motors, which makes the $90 price point really appealing. Repcord also offers a linear rail upgrade for the x-axis of the CR30. This linear rail allows for smoother motion on the x-axis and also solves the wobbling problem on the bracket that can be caused by the V-wheels not being set correctly. Repcord not only manufactures these kits, but also actually uses them on a fleet of CR30s that are used for production, so I tend to trust him when it comes to the quality of these upgrades. The bracket that's attached to the stepper motors is a piece of anodized aluminum, and it feels remarkably sturdy. It really feels like a piece of OEM construction, and as a side bonus, it's this really slick red color that is identical to the red that's used on the extruder. So it doesn't really look out of place, it fits right in on the printer. The stepper is manufactured by LDO Motors, and the bracket itself is made by NAK3D, and it's very cleverly designed in that it's symmetrical. This means it's easy to install without worrying about putting the wrong motor on the wrong side. Replacing the stepper motors is a really straightforward process, and I'd say it probably takes somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half to fully complete. The part of the installation I spent the most time on was measuring the offset between the timing pulley and the stepper motor itself. This has to be done manually, and it's important to make sure that the height of the new pulley is identical to the height of the old pulley. This is so that the belt will wrap around the pulley at the same spot on both. Reinstalling the stepper motors is fairly easy, but before I put tension on it, I figured I would take advantage of the fact that the belts were already loose to install the linear rail. Installing the linear rail is a much more involved process, and the first step is to completely remove the hot end assembly from the bracket that holds it to the x-axis. It's not difficult, but there are a lot of tiny screws, so you definitely want to work slow. The linear rail provides smooth linear motion. And if you've never flipped one around, I highly recommend it. It's really interesting to watch all the ball bearings travel on the rail as you move the pellet block back and forth. It's kind of a cool visual as to what's going on when you're moving one of these rails. The only real step to installing the rail itself is tightening it down using some fasteners and roll-in inserts. And you can tell it's been installed correctly when the pillow block moves freely back and forth. It's pretty remarkable how smooth the travel is once the bracket's been installed. It doesn't have the same stutter or hesitation you sometimes feel with V-wheels that have flat spots in them from sitting for too long. Just like the stepper motor installation, installing the linear rail probably takes somewhere between an hour and an hour and a half. And if you're going to be doing both, I would definitely recommend doing both at once. It's good to have the belts loose when you start to install the linear rail. Speaking of belts, this is probably the part of the process I struggle the most with. It's just one of those things where the entire time I was working on it, I felt like I needed a third hand to hold everything together. It's not difficult, it's just tedious. Once everything's been tightened up and calibrated, the CR30 is ready to start printing again. To me, the real strength of the CR30 is that it's a production printer. It can be used to spit parts out again and again and again over time, and adding this linear rail upgrade as well as supporting the stepper drivers makes it feel a lot more robust. So for anybody who has a CR30 and is planning on using it as a production printer, these upgrades make a lot of sense, especially if you want the printer to provide repeatable results over time. 
Considering the relatively low cost of these upgrades, I think it's worth it if you're going to be using the CR30 as a production printer. There are links in the description to both the linear rail upgrade as well as the stepper motors and the videos that show the installation process. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching and have fun printing.